Seriously? But, Mr. Morris, I don't understand, sir. How could you only be telling me this now? <sighs> I'm afraid that there's nothing really I can do. I'm really facing a crisis. My hands are tied. But what about my film? Well, I'm afraid you have to come up with something on your own. Take it from me. Sometimes you just have to let things go. Same goes for this film festival. Oh! Oh! Hey, isn't it Xavier? So he's back in Fontaine now! Oh, why, if it isn't the dear Traveler and Paimon. I really didn't expect to bump into you here at this time. Well, I was doing just fine until I received some terrible news just now. The investor I was working with for my upcoming film has fallen upon some hard times and is no longer able to provide the promised amount of funds. Can't you just find a different investor? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. We had signed an agreement specific to the Fontanalia Film Festival. The Fontanalia Film Festival? What's that? Oh, is this your first time participating in Fontaine's Fontanalia Film Festival? Then allow me to fill you in. The Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights, who went on a quest to search for the Oceanids, and eventually welcomed the Hydro Arconigeria. Uh, the holiday is deeply connected to the founding of Fontaine, as well as its unique laws and trials. It's one of the most important festivals for this nation. But what's with that weird expression on your face? It's like you're trying really hard to remember something. Ah, I was just trying to recall the exact description from the books. <laughs> In order to avoid any, uh, unnecessary arguments over semantics, <laughs> I usually try to recite things straight from the source. Well, either way, Paimon thinks she gets it now. It's just like the Windbloom Festival in Mondstadt, and the Lantern right in Lille. Yes, those are festivals of a similar variety. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good festival? And just like those of other nations, Fontaine will hold a plethora of events around this time each year. To commemorate the Loch Knights, people will imitate them by putting on special costumes, raising golden cups, and going door to door asking for pure water. But a few years ago, Lady Farina started to find the whole idea a little drab, and so decided to change the part about pure water to sweets. That really doesn't surprise Paimon at all. The whole thing seems more akin to a carnival now, and it's quite popular among the kids. Every year you can hear a bunch of them saying, trial or treat. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. But how does that connect back to the film festival you mentioned? Ah, yes, it appears I've strayed off topic. <laughs> I just got too excited after seeing you. Let me get back to the point. The Fontanalia Film Festival is an event proposed by the Fontaine Film Association this year. Now that film technology has matured as a medium, it's the perfect time to introduce more people to the art form. During this time, people may submit films to be evaluated, and the entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the Association. The what award? The Farina Award! You know, after the Hydro Archon. They coined it while Lady Farina was still in power, but uh, even though things have changed, no one has made any motion to update the name. Perhaps everyone still thinks of it as a pretty appropriate name. Even though she isn't the Hydro Archon any longer, Lady Farina is still Fontaine's superstar. Anyone with eyes can see the way she shines on the stage. Huh. All right. Guess the name does work pretty well when you put it that way. Oh, but who would have guessed there'd be an issue with the funding? How will I ever explain this to Miss Chiori? Not to say all the other actors who traveled all the way here from Inazuma. Chiori? Uh, sounds familiar. Where have we heard that name before? 
Yes, that's her. I asked her to oversee the event's art direction, including the design of the actor's costumes and appearances. Oh, Paimon remembers now. Navia said that her clothes were designed by Chiori, and Kirara's outfit, too. How to describe her? Uh, well, she tends to be pretty direct and can be very forceful when it comes to dealing with people. The fashion world in Fontaine has dubbed her the Thundering Seamstress. Her remarkable designs have led many Fontanians to become very interested in Inazuma. Anyway, Chiori is acquainted with all the actors I've invited from Inazuma. Without her help, I don't think I would have been able to get such an international cast for the film. She really is a kind soul. Who are the actors from Inazuma? Do we know them? Why don't the two of you accompany me to the Aquabus station to welcome them? Judging from the time, the Aquabus should be arriving shortly. Chiori will be waiting to meet me there as well. Miss Chiori? <sighs> Your talk with the investor sure went fast. The Aquabus hasn't even arrived yet. Oh? And who are they? Ah, uh, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Pleased to meet you. Likewise! We've heard the owner of Chiori Ya Boutique is a skilled seamstress, so it's a real pleasure to finally meet you in person. Why, thank you. I strove to create an outfit that matched her high social station as the Demoiselle. So tell me, what happened? I can tell the conversation didn't go quite as expected. Ah, well, it's like this. Ugh. I know, I know, Chiori, you don't have to say it. You did remind me that this investor was a little bit sketchy. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But how could I pass it up? <laughs> he offered me twice as much as the others. And therein lies the problem. Yes, but just put yourself in my shoes. After obtaining such an excellent script, it's only natural that I would want to make the most of the film. The budgets that the others had proposed were nowhere near enough. It's difficult to find someone willing to front such a large amount of Mora, so... Don't be sad, Xavier. We might be able to help scrounge up some more together for you. Oh, thank you, Paimon. That means a lot to me. But the cost of the film is staggering. I'm afraid that any Mora we can scrounge together in a short amount of time won't even be able to cover the actor's fees. We need to move on. What's happened has already happened, and there's no changing it. But now's not the time to give up. What? You're saying that you have a plan? No, that's not what I mean. I'm simply saying I wouldn't give up just yet. The actors I recommended aren't just after Mora, after all. <laughs> Really? 
Then where do you live? We Malazines live in Marysee Village. The only way to enter is from underwater. Oh, you must be pretty tired after work every day, right? I mean, you have to swim all that way just to go home. You're so thoughtful. But some Melusines choose to live in the Court of Fontaine because it's so much more convenient. This is our stop. Oh, we've arrived, but I haven't even finished chatting with Abel yet. I also enjoyed Abel's introductions to Fontaine along the way. Everything you described was so clear and detailed that we can't help but want to hear more. Thank you so much. I'm usually working here on this aqua bus, so I hope I'll have the chance to see you again. There are still many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> Welcome to the Court of Fontaine. <sighs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Thank you for extending the invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Oh, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh? It's the Traveler and Paimon! Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking about you on the way here! Are you also here for the film? We just ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him. <laughs> but I'm not an actress. Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka are the real actors here. I'm just tagging along with Ayaka to have a good time together. Uh, about that, I mean, how was I supposed to contact you when I was making preparations for the film? I figured you were probably busy and I didn't want to disturb you. So I could only keep you in the back of my mind while I sought other actors to play the lead roles in the film. <laughs> I had been thinking about a surprise reunion with you during our trip here, but you still managed to surprise me first. Oh, so you all know each other already! <laughs> My, what a coincidence! What are the chances everyone could be brought together here like this? Why don't we go to Hotel de Boer and catch up over a meal? I've already made a reservation! Huh? Did you reserve two spots for us too? Yes, of course, of course. I'll be sure to tell the boss to serve a few more delicious dishes just to make sure there'll be enough food. Very well. Then please, kindly lead the way, Mr. Xavier. Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. And look at that huge spinning sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? Fontaine is like, oh, it sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers too. Ah, uh, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? 
I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but, uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? I've considered that option too, but unfortunately it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? What? Uh, no, out of the question! To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 that won't do. There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders, and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hoped this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Yashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Uh, all right, I'll do as you say. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough Mora now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. Come on now, no need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Me too! Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. You are too kind, all of you. I... I really don't know how to... <laughs> Alright, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, so, instead of Mora, you'll help with filming and production. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. All right. Pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. I originally wanted to personally serve as director, but I've been too busy working as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. Paimon knows what the director and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot when the camera operator begins shooting. The work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. A clapper board? Oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that job? For sure! Paimon's always wanted to try that! All right! Then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? 
Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the Traveler take the role. Oh, she's great when it comes to using a camera. Paimon can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the Traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. I'm sure that's due to the Traveler's journey across Devath and all the places I've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Thank you, it really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. So, all that's left for us to find is a director and an assistant. Oh, me, me, me! I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Oh, Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. <laughs> Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? <laughs> Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! Well, uh... Ah, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect, and the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine. You're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film. Anything! <sighs> then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? No, there's no need to trouble you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are many places you would like to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very
Xavier said yesterday afternoon went well. Yeah, and how about you, Ayaka? What were you up to yesterday? After we split up, Ayato went to see Udex Nervilet at the Palais Marmonia. I was originally thinking of going with him, but he said he could manage it himself. He told me to go see the sights around Fontaine and to enjoy the local culture. So I rode the aqua bus with Yoimiya and visited the opera house on Erinias Island. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what we saw there! Two mechanical puppets that were dancing together! You've already seen them, right? Yeah, yeah, those two! Amazing, aren't they? We sat and watched for quite a while. It was mesmerizing, like we could keep watching them forever. It was the same for us the first time we saw them, too! Afterwards, we went swimming at the beach! Well, diving, to be exact. It was the first time I ever breathed underwater! I held Ayaka's hand and we counted down together. Three, two, one, and then... Splash! We were beneath the waves! First, I didn't dare to open my mouth. But once I couldn't hold my breath any longer, I decided to take a big breath in. <laughs> Turns out, the water wasn't as salty as I imagined. It didn't really taste like anything at all. Before I knew it, I was breathing like normal down there. It was an amazing feeling. Ayaka said I was too nervous and needed to loosen my grip. Uh, she got used to everything way faster than I did. I knew that the Traveler could do it. So I had no doubt we could do it, too. That helped me feel at ease as soon as we dove in. The underwater world in Fontaine truly is beautiful. I love seeing the Romaritime flowers blossoming underwater, like little candles lighting up the streets at night. Yeah, and there were so many creatures that we've never seen in Inazuma. Like those fish that shimmer like a sword blade. Whoosh! Oh, and those big fish that call when they see people. You mean hunters, rays, and blubber beasts! <laughs> I just love the name blubber beast. Just wait till Pops and the others hear about this. They probably won't believe a word I say. <laughs> Yoi me a while. It was dark before we throw the aqua bus back to the city. I figured she'd want to sleep in today. <laughs> yeah, even I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up. <sighs> I still felt like I was drifting in the waves when I went to sleep last night. But as soon as I woke up today, I remembered that we'd all be shooting a film together and I was ready to go. Speaking of the film, where's everybody else? My brother and Xavier were speaking to the restaurant owner about using the place as a filming location. They should be here soon. As for the others, they... We're here. Please excuse my tardiness. I just finished the Special Patrol's six-mile morning jog. Wait, six miles? Uh, I'm so tired. I heard you all chatting, so I decided to come down. I sure could use some of that endless energy everyone else has. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Mm. Can someone fetch me a cup of coffee? More milk, hold the sugar. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. No, you can't go anywhere. Please, have a seat over here so I can get started on your makeup. Ugh, the last thing I want is coffee stains on my costumes. I can get the coffee! It's the perfect job for an assistant! Ugh, so much energy. Seriously, what's her secret? Oh, Yoimiya's always like that. But you sure look exhausted, Farina. It's because you're not used to waking up so early, huh? Of course not. I spent the whole night reading the novel from cover to cover. 
Marking sections that either need to be omitted or adapted. Wow, Paimon didn't expect you to be so thorough. <laughs> well, I was the biggest star in all of Fontaine, after all. It takes more than just a pretty face to earn a reputation like that. I know how to get serious when the situation calls for it. I went all out when I was acting as an Archon, so why wouldn't I do the same for my own life? Here's your coffee, Dr. Farina. Oh, thank you. Ah, <sighs> the sound of being called Director and the aroma of coffee. <laughs> Feels almost as refreshing as hearing the birds chirping in the morning. Oh, it seems everyone has managed to arrive on time! We've reached an agreement with the restaurant owner. We are free to use the second floor to shoot our film. Really? That's great! He is really looking forward to our film, and hopes that providing his restaurant as a filming location will attract more customers. Well then, Mr. Xavier, I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, thanks! First, I'd like to introduce our new members. This is our prop manager, Veronique. She'll be in charge of all the films, props, and items. And this is Bono, our lighting technician. He'll be in charge of lighting and illumination to set up each scene's atmosphere. Wow, sure feels like we have some real professionals joining the crew now. First of all, please allow me to first express my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the crew. When my investor informed me yesterday that he wouldn't be able to provide the funds, I really thought that this was the nail in the coffin for this film. I had no idea that I'd find so many people willing to help me on such short notice. Thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. No need to be so cordial, Mr. Xavier. We're all honored to be a part of this. Your works made a profound impression on me when I saw them back in Inazuma. I am sure that someday, this film will be remembered as a prime example of cultural exchange between Fontaine and Inazuma. Yes, the story, the reason I agreed to join. I can't bear to even imagine what this film would look like without the very best director. Anyway, I would like to make a promise to everyone that as the producer of this film, I'll do whatever I can to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. This is not just my film. It also embodies the thoughts and feelings of every person here, as well as the endless effort we are about to pour into it. <laughs> so, without further ado, the Two Musketeers will officially begin filming now! You may take it from here, Director Farina. All right. Listen up, everyone. The first scene takes place when the two young musketeers are living at the Baron's home, still unaware of all that is about to happen to them. We'll need props and lighting to set the scene. Our lead actors can go get their makeup done, and extras, please take this time to go over your positions. Whoa, seems Farina's really kicking things into gear as the director. Is everyone clear? I don't want anyone traipsing around the set like umbrella finches. All right, cameras will start rolling as soon as the set is ready. Let's make a film that'll make some serious waves in Fontaine. Ah. Uh, not the kind of waves that drown people. I mean, the good kind of waves. <laughs> uh, seems like she's still a bit traumatized by that. Anyway, let's go see if there's anything we can do to help. How about here? Uh, a little more to the left. You got it! Hey, Yoimiya! Do you need a hand? No, no, I'm fine. You know, doing the lighting is kind of like designing a fireworks show. 
It's interesting to imagine what kind of atmosphere the lights will create. I heard that the Traveler will be operating the camera and Paimon will be the clapper loader, right? <laughs> Those rules are just perfect for the two of you. Really? Is that because it'll be easy for Paimon to hold the clapper board while flying? Well, sure, there's that, but that's not exactly what I meant. I just think that after all your journeys together, you two must have developed a super close bond and just naturally know how to work with each other. If I'm not mistaken, the director will want the cameras rolling as soon as the clapper board goes clack. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's amazing to see the magic behind filmmaking. Yomiya, we need lights over there too. I've got to get back to work. Chat with you later. Oh, it's exciting to see so many people working together to bring the film to life. Seems like Yamiya's really getting into it. But she was right. We do have a super close bond. Don't we? <laughs> Paimon's really happy to hear that. Ayaka has mentioned you to me before. She said that you two were great friends when you were kids. No talking. I'm thinking about how to do your eyeshadow. Ah, yes. To help me really look the part. To achieve a more young and naive look for this scene. Are you saying the wrinkles around my eyes are too deep? You just have too much of a calculating look in your eyes. <laughs> You sure don't mince your words. It seems you really haven't changed much. Quiet. So, this is a real musket? No, it's just a prop weapon. Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. Which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin could still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will make them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well-maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use these types of firearms on a regular basis? Yes, I perform routine maintenance on my weapons every day. Just like we as people need to eat and sleep, muskets need to be cleaned and maintained. I also perform similar care for my sword every day and familiarize myself with its shape and weight, to the point where it feels like a natural extension of my body. Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. Yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. Oh, sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. Okay, understood. When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder and use your eye to look down the weapon's sights. Like this? Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. <clears throat> This is the end of the road for you. Good. Now turn your body a little. That way, you'll get me less of a target to work with. And relax your shoulders. Be
everyone. We're looking to wrap with our two main ladies today. I can already smell our success. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? Oh, aren't you the expert now? This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Anyway, get ready! Lights! Camera! Action! The view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? <sighs> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father! What did I expect? Seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother! In this world, Mora and status is everything! She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? So let's see. What is stronger, Mora and Power, or the two muskets in your hands? Get them! Too leap! There are too many of them! It'll be okay. We'll cover each other, Iris. Mother will be watching over us, too. You've lost. <clears throat> to think I'd lose to my own two kids. We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. <laughs> Then tell me, what did you do all this for? You lost your mother, and will soon kill your father as well. What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? We will gain our long-awaited justice. <sighs> it's over. It's over. So, where will you go now, Tulip? I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I want to go visit Mother's grave. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Huh? Tulip, look! What is it? 
its mother's favorite, the Rainbow Rose. Look, it's blooming again. Excellent! That was beyond mesmerizing. <laughs> Even I didn't expect the scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take. <laughs> All right, everyone. We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrois. Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapperboard either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevrous. The way you said, long awaited justice. It gave Paimon chills. That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. Whoa, Paimon would have never guessed you're that type. Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Captain, I have something urgent to report. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. It's okay, don't worry about us. Oh? Was she whisked away by work already? I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. <sighs> then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead actress. Thank you for your kind words, Director Farina. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless... I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. Even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. Yep, see you tomorrow! Well, what should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Shivers today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Huh? W where are we going? You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small remote islands of intel. Affirmative. It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Oh, 
you mean that famous perfumer? She's a good friend of mine. She's lent me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. Huh. Paimon didn't know that there were different varieties of rainbow rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar, but with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer! Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Uh, really? And who is it? <sighs> it's the novelist. But didn't you say he had an alibi? To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes, we're going to pay him a visit at his home. That should be his house. There are so many Gardamex stationed around the place.
about you. Is Shefras still not joining us today? Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Huh? That, that's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. She even said that she'll get me into a couple scenes so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? If only Chevros was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. <sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. It said that the killer in the murder case was none other than the author of The Two Musketeers. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. He came forward and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Uh, I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. To be fair... I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. What was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh... Sunk to an all-time low? Spread to the four corners of Tavat! <laughs> Uh, excuse me, everyone. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. I've been talking non-stop with the Film Association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to... the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. Um, a pleasure to meet you all. Yes, glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation, and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. Oh, well, uh, the situation has, uh... Indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last-minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. The good news is that we're almost done filming now. And I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen. Is that so? I see that that's, that's great news. All right. Now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way... Let's get the show on the road! We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. Yep, we'll be ready. Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! 
Okay, now move the camera slowly. Uh, try to focus on that flower. Hmm? What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Something the matter? Uh, uh, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Veronique! Can we try a different camera? No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Lights! Camera! Action! Don't tell me. This one is broken too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. What? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away! Oh, and you too, Bono! Go find our spare camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set! On it. Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. I see. Well, let's not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors, to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place... No time to dwell on that now. Let's get back to filming. Ahem! Quiet on set! Places, everyone! Lights! Camera! Action! By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm, yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the chief of the guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode! Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Director! Director! We have a problem! Oh, we're in the middle of a take! Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, Director. Our film, all the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case, has disappeared! Oh, wait, well, well, what did you say? <gasps> Mr. Bono, please take me to where the film was kept right away. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bono to look for the film. Everyone else, stay put and wrap up the scene. Unbelievable. How could all these problems happen in just one day? We're back. How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. <laughs> you scared me for a moment there! I nearly thought we had lost everything! I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um, could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? Hmm. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot, and wrap this thing up once and for all! Yeah, let's finish it! I would like to officially announce that our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming! <laughs> uh, I'm on his spent. It's so late already! 
Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product. Thank you all for your dedication and support. And just like Director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... Alright, alright, let's save the awards speech for later, and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Anyway, now it's time to party! <laughs> let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in! <laughs> This place is hopping. Everyone's finally getting to relax after wrapping up the film. Hey, Ayato! How's your work been going? Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Oh, that's great! Then maybe Paimon will be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! Oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. Ah, you've got a point. She's always complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable after.
Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <laughs> What? What is going on? Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> uh, Shivers, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer! It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! So what do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice. I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them. Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh... You mean... Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined! I didn't have a choice! No. You always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening, when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she... had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that... We resolved to get our revenge. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer! The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Huh? He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. 
But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Wanna guess how far he got? <laughs> he had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. <laughs> As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. I am. I thought you could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. <sighs> you know what he has done. Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris. And tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge. As well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Chivalrous? The rest of the special patrol is here. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. L'Atelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. Hmm. <sighs> Chevres. Let's go.
We should give an explanation to the crew. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be... Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevrus? Mm -hmm. The call is yours. We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. If I had to guess, They'll probably all be sent to the Fortress of Meripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. Oh, you mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Ahem! Alright, then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, there's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Chevrus. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right. Count me in. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Chevrus. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. Thank you very much. Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that, since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh... Traveler, how would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? Is that so? Oh, well, thanks for sharing. When I was young, my father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Oh? Why is that? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. That sounds awful. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the icy water. The bone-chilling cold took away my senses. I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. 
I waited for my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. I did, however, make it to the other side. I've never felt afraid about anything in my life after that. Nor have I ever cried again. That way of teaching would have never worked on Paimon. Yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. It's just that, working now as I am in the pursuit of justice, I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that windy all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Shivers. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. Anyway, how about a race? Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. Uh, you guys go ahead! Paimon will grab the clapper board to mark the start of the race! Oh, that felt good. You were so fast in the water, Chevres! You were swimming even faster than Paimon could fly! Uh, so, about the special patrol. Did you join because of your dad? Partly, but I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories! Of course. It was only after I joined the Special Patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. Xavier! It's been a while! Hey there, you two! Sorry I've been scarce. I've been buried in marketing and preparing the film for release ever since we wrapped post-production. The award ceremony is today, right? Paimon wonders if we'll win the Farina Award! I'd give it a 90% chance. Farina! Oh, Paimon didn't know you were already here! You're earlier than everyone else! I'm sure the others will also be here in no time. Uh, hmm... Xavier, if we end up getting called on stage, shouldn't you come up with a name for our crew? Well, uh, but we don't even know if we're going to win! I wouldn't want to jinx our chances by celebrating early. 
Surely you've seen the audience's reactions to our film. We've had nothing but critical acclaim. You've also had conversations with the Opera House's operating staff, right? Didn't they want to increase the number of showings? With the Mora you've made from the box office, you can now open your very own film company! But that's all credit to my amazing crew! You've all helped to make this a reality, so I can't be the only one asked to come up with a name. Well, give it some thought. I'm sure the crew will respect your choice. All right, but before that, Traveler and Paimon, could I trouble you to quickly pay a visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Huh? But shouldn't we stay for the award ceremony? I wanted to ask you two to invite Shavras to join us at the ceremony. She's one of the lead roles, after all. I haven't been able to find her recently, so I haven't had the chance to invite her personally. According to the papers, the culprits of the musket murder case will be personally escorted today by the captain of the special patrol to the fortress of Meripede. Oh, Paimon gets it now. Yep, just wait here, Xavier. All right, then I'll... This is as far as I'll be taking them. I'll leave the three of them to you now. Got another errand to run? Something like that? I'm expected at a party. Now that's something you don't hear every day. Found a new pastime? No, it's just a special occasion. Shivers! Risley! Festivals really do bring people together. It's been a while since I last had so many visitors at the Fortress of Meripede. Call it the festival spirit, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. Even our head nurse has gotten herself all worked up preparing super deluxe nutritious shakes. Just one gulp and you'll have met all your nutrition needs. Were you talking about work just now? We've already finished discussing everything. So, what do you think about my heads up, Mr. Risley? Hmm. I believe I haven't yet made any promises or guarantees. But you also didn't shoot me down. Here, how about this? You could give everyone a copy of the newspaper. Perhaps on the day when the cover story happens to, oh, I don't know, expose a certain someone's misdeeds from 20 years ago? Hmm. I suppose then a certain someone may soon find himself the most unlucky person in the Fortress of Meripede? While another two people will soon be hailed as heroes. Speaking of heroes... Did you two need something from me? Oh, uh, actually, we're here for... You're here to invite me to the party, right? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Ooh, then let's head back right away! See you, Risley! Happy Fontanalia Festival! And the same to you. for the first Fontanalia Film Festival is... The Two Musketeers! Congratulations, Mr. Xavier. We won? Uh, uh, I can't believe it! I, I really can't thank all of you enough! See? My takes on Fontaine's entertainment industry have never been wrong. Now, please welcome to the stage the producer of The Two Musketeers, Mr. Xavier! Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much for your recognition and support. While I'm up here, I would love to give special thanks to... Time really flies, huh? It certainly feels that way. It feels like it was only yesterday when you were teaching me to hold a musket. Will you come back to Fontaine again? Of course! I'm very fond of this city. There are so many novel and interesting things that it's been hard to keep track of them all. But how about you? I can't say the thought has crossed my mind before, but I'd be willing to consider it now. I will be eagerly awaiting your visit. It would be wonderful if you could visit my home and enjoy a taste of our tea and desserts. Yeah, let's keep in touch. Did you accomplish all you came here for? Yes. And you should visit Inazuma again sometime. How has Ogura and her business been? To my knowledge, she's doing quite well. Tell her I said hi. I certainly will. I heard the thunderstorm has stopped. Yes. And the war has also been brought to an end. Peace and prosperity has returned to the islands. I quite like the sound of that. Perfect for hanging textiles out to dry. I'd like to offer my thanks again to the entire cast and crew. Without you, I would have never completed this film, much less had the opportunity to be standing on this stage. With the support of my entire crew, I would like to officially announce our film company, Musketeer Pictures! Woohoo! That has a really nice ring to it! Then in that case, let's please welcome all the members of Musketeer Pictures onto the stage for a commemorative photo! Oh, Paimon didn't know we'd also be taking pictures! Director Farina, I believe you are the most deserving person to raise this trophy. Huh? No, 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 no. There's no need. It's so embarrassing. It's an honor the director deserves. Yes, I agree. Just accept that you're not getting out of this. Ready, everyone? Three, two, one! Musketeer, Musketeer Pictures! pictures.